Stay. Stay. What? That's not our favorite letter. It's X. Duh. All right. So um, I would just like to say the main thing I love about Russ is he high fives me every time I get up on the stage, and yet he has no idea where my hand has been. <laughs> no, no. I know you know, Russ. I know you know. And I want that tape back. But anyway, uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am Moon the Pirate. A uh, little backstory: I am a lesbian. I live in small Hicksville, USA. Uh, I have awesome parents, and I spent the majority of my teenage years trying to discover my own sexual identity and conquering the world through the cunning use of video games. So, yeah, I am a lesbianerd. It is true. Um, I don't really play video games as much as I used to because I'm kind of getting older, you know. And I know I'm getting older because, like. In my 30s, I found that recalling memories is the equivalent of finding my clothes after a wild night in my 20s. So, which, which I like to refer to that as the grown-ups version of those hidden object games, you know? Because you wake up and it's like, find your underwear, find your bra, find a way out the back, my husband's home soon. Like, oh shit. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's fun. But getting older has, it's afforded me to look into stuff that I've always kind of been interested in, like history and like more specifically, really strong, predominant females in history, like Joan of Arc, of course, Joan of Arc. Yeah, or as I like to call her, the hipster William Wallace. Yes, because she was totally killing Englishmen like 200 years before it was cool. So, you know. And she started young. She was like 16, just riding around the countryside with like ridiculous glasses she didn't even need and a fake mustache and buying the peasants that hipster blue beer stuff, you know, whatever. So, you know, she got a following and actually went to the, the uh, like Prince Charles, I think his name was. And she like pulls him aside and she tells him, listen, if you give me an army, I will give you a crown of a country that's so obscure you probably never even heard of it. So he's like, okay, and so he does. He gives her an army, an army and she does exactly what she said she was gonna do. She recaptures an English-occupied uh, French castle and she gives him his crown, he becomes the king and like all good politicians, he immediately cuts funding. So. <laughs> She goes on her next battle or her next fight. She's like, all right, boys, on my word. One, two, three, God damn it. <laughs> so of course she gets captured and the, the Englishmen send her off to the, the Catholic church and they spend the next year playing their favorite game, which is blame it on the devil. So, <laughs> you know, they, yeah. They keep trying to get her to sign this parchment that, that says she's a heretic, but she won't sign it because all they have is a pen made out of an ostrich quill, you know, ostrich feather, but she won't sign anything other than with a dodo bird feather, so, you know. But they finally get her to, like a year later, she signs it, and then she's like, wait a minute, I was being ironic. And they were like, no backsies, and they burned her at the stake. So, it was sad. And, and the best part about that is like 500 years later, they were like, uh, oh, damn, uh, our bad. Let's make her a saint in our own fucking religion. So yay for her. It's true. Yay, and I got to drop the first F-bomb of the night. Yay. <laughs> You're all safe, my babies. So, but the one thing, the one thing that I really look into and of course look up to more than her, of course, is piracy. Oh, yeah. And I won't tell you exactly what got me into piracy, but it may or may not have been a film about buccaneers in or around the coast of Mexico. Just kind of put that in your brain there. I like how that trickled through the audience. They were like, what? Oh. So, <laughs> thank you. Some of you will explain going home. So, but yeah. Like, and not just like the big burly biker pirate types. Like, did you know that the most successful pirate, arguably the most successful pirate of all of time, was a little Chinese woman named Madame Ching. Woo! True story. 
True story. See, when she was young, like, sorry about the pronunciation, but when she was young, she was apparently so beautiful that this pirate king comes and whisks her away and marries her. So you know, they actually were kind of happy together. He gave her half of his pirate operation. She popped out a couple of his kids and they were doing okay. But then, of course, he's a pirate. He gets killed. So the, the other pirates have like this big council because he's got a pretty big operation. And they're sitting around one day and they're trying to figure out, well, who takes over? What do we do? So she comes in and just Anna Nicole Smith's the shit out of the whole council. <laughs> and just takes over everything. So by the time she died in like her 60s, I think, she retired having raised her children as a single mother and having something like 2,000 pirate ships and 4,000 men under her control. That's impressive. But just like as awesome as she was and as mad respect as I have for her, the one pirate that's just on sheer ball sackery alone that I love more than anything is that feisty redhead Ann Bonnie. Because Ann Bonnie was just the best. See, she was an illegitimate child, raised as a boy, wore boys' clothes, did boys' things, and then when she got old enough, her dad tried to like marry her off or whatever. So she got mad and ran off with this guy named Calico Jack Rackham, who turned out to be just the biggest douche of bags like ever. <laughs> just just the douchest of bags. I mean, and we'll get into that in a second, but so they're going okay at first, you know, she's sailing around the world with him and they're doing stuff, looting, polluting, whatever. And then they, they happen to capture this one particular ship and they get this one particular sailor and his name is Sailor Reed. And she catches a liking to him, you know, she likes him, she gives him the hey baby eyes and one thing leads to another and surprise, titties, Sailor Reed... Sailor Reed's real name was Mary. And Mary Reed had almost identical to the same story as Anne Bonnie. Raised illegitimate child as a boy, boys clothes, boys things, everything. So, you know, they did this little thing together, you know. And what most historians believe, believe it or not, is that after that, they sort of started kind of uh, loading each other's cannons, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Right? Russ? Where's Russ? Russ, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? High five? High five. Yeah. I got you again. <laughs> so, yeah. So, they were together, and that was fine. But, like, the one thing that I found that's amazing about all of these stories is that it was all done out of love. Like, Joan of Arc did it for the love of her God. Like, she made the ultimate sacrifice for the love of her God. And, and uh, Madame Cheng, well, she did it for basically the love of her husband's legacy. And Anne Bonny and Mary Reed, well, let's face it, they just loved to party, but still, like, it was a love. And, and like, that's the thing is, love is everywhere. Love can, can be found at home in your friends, your family, your girlfriend, boyfriend, sometimes both, I don't judge. And it, it's just everywhere and it does everything. It makes you get up in the morning and go to work. Sometimes it makes you come home from work. It makes you create and explore. And, and that's the most beautiful thing because I have to say the most wonderful thing I've ever seen love do is take each and every performer that has ever dared to step on this stage and took away all of that anxiety and fear and made them go up on the stage and share their love with the audience. And to me, out of everything I've studied and read, that's pretty freaking historical. I mean, it is. And Honestly, if you never learn anything, never take anything away from a crazed lesbian pirate, take this one, <laughs> one bit of advice. You are loved. Whether you're sitting here right now or you're watching this at home, you are loved. You, you truly are. So don't ever forget that. And the fact of the matter is you should share that. Whatever love you have, Never be afraid to share it with any and everyone because that's the one thing that makes history in and of itself.
And in my opinion, that is exactly what Open Stage has done for the past two years. Nothing but love and making history. So, Russ, no, thank you for hosting this crazy, crazy thing. So, if... What? Anytime the woman lets me out of the cage. But, uh... Lesbian doesn't mean waiting for the right penis, Russ. You just got heckled from on stage. That's impressive. So, if, if you agree with what I've said, or even if you don't, I really don't care, uh, feel free to find me on Facebook, Moon the Pirate, real easy. But just try to remember you were loved, and remember, I am Moon the Pirate, and it's not just a name. It's also a very special request. Good night, open stage. Thanks for listening. <laughs>